Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. It's, uh, it's kind of a pleasure to speak to Bill C-11 uh, because I'll offer a few things based on a career, or at least my first career, of dealing with the CRTC um, as a, a broadcaster, as a person who is on the radio and occasionally on television, and especially as a manager of uh, stations that uh, were required to follow the CRTC regulations. I think the first distinction, though, and I have to say that the concerns that have been expressed about C-11 need to be paid attention to. We shouldn't just dust them off and say, no, no, there's no problem here. Uh, the, the questions are legitimate, but we also need to drill into the details and see exactly what the implications are. I think when you do that, you're going to end up uh, feeling a lot more secure and confident that C-11 is going to be a significant value add to Canada. First of all, this is the Broadcast Act that we're talking about. The Broadcast Act relates to broadcasters. So I want to quote a couple of things here that kind of settle what we're talking about. Undertakings for the transmission or retransmission of programs over the internet will be a distinct class of broadcast undertaking. So in other words, basically we're saying that the web platforms that distribute and, 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 and carry programming to Canadians will be classed as broadcasters. But the legislation also says the Broadcast Act does not apply in respect to programs uploaded to an online undertaking that provides a social media service by a user of the service. So in other words, the cat videos, the uh, homegrown uh, YouTube, even the, the production that you may have spent some money to, to develop will not be covered, will not be influenced by this. And further, I think that uh, there, there's one exception that we need to note, and it's as follows. It's right in the legislation itself. It says the person who uses a social media service to upload programs for transmission over the internet and reception by other users of that service, and who is not the provider of the service or the provider's affiliate, does not by the fact of the use of that service, carry on a broadcasting undertaking. So I want to go back to my radio days. 15 years of uh, misspent uh, youth, but it was an amazing education uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, I came into the radio business just after the initial Canadian content regulations came to radio. And here's how that worked. The original rule said that 30% of the music that we played from 6 a.m. until midnight had to be Canadian content. And I'll describe what that is in a second. Later, uh, the, the, the CRTC and the governments of the day came forward with a, a formula where the radio stations had to contribute to a fund. Initially, it was called the Canadian Talent Development Fund, and there have been other names and other versions of it. So... The two things were, first of all, you had to profile Canadian content, and then later on, you had to contribute financially to the, uh, basically, to the creation of Canadian content. So what we're doing here now is no different than what was done 50 years ago. Now, how did we know what Canadian content was? Well, in the radio business, every record had what they called the Maple logo, M-A-P-L. It was a system that identified music, artist, production, and lyrics of the piece. And the rule was that anything produced after, I think it was 1971 or 72, had to have two of those categories covered off by as Canadian to be classified as a, a piece of Canadian content. It was tough in the beginning, I have to say. Um, you know, I had uh, grown up listening to radio that was free to play anything it wanted at any time, uh, within reason, mind you, and I'll get to that. But the fact is that all of a sudden we had to play Canadian content, and in those days it was scarce. At least, you know, the, the kind of music that we wanted to program on our station was scarce. I still today cannot listen to Snowbird by Anne Murray because we played it to death because it was, you know, it was what we had at the time. That no longer exists, and it's because the Canadian content rules led to the development of a Canadian music industry that punches way above its weight 
around the world. But there was a, a unique proposition to those early CanCon days that are totally different to what we face today. Radio by its nature is very linear. The listener listened to the piece of music that I had on the air and they got it in the order that I gave it to them. And if they were going to listen to our station, they would get that 30% of Canadian content, period. But it's different in this case. We're asking the online broadcasters to simply make Canadian content available. So for those of you who use Netflix, you go in and there are little tiles that show you all of the movies available. What this rule will do is say to Netflix, look, you've got to make sure that Canadian content is represented in those tiles. People don't have to choose it, but they have to know that it is there. So that way, we're going to at least give Canadian creators access to audiences that can choose to view their material or listen to it or not. Now, the actions of the regulator certainly changed throughout my lifetime. Sometimes when I talk to uh, kids in school, they, they ask me what, what it was like in the olden days when I was a kid, uh, you know, when we would ride our dinosaurs to school and, and, and all that good stuff. Well, when I was a kid, Canadian radio stations were not allowed to play commercials on Sunday. If they played a recording, they had to announce that it was a transcription so that people wouldn't think that the performance was live. Well, that was then. And so over the years, the broadcast regulator updated, streamlined, etc., allowed things that weren't allowed previously. But I do remember only two times, maybe three, that the Canadian regulators stepped in and actually got in the way of a licensed broadcast undertaking. One was uh, at a station that I ended up working for as one of my first stations, CJOR in Vancouver. The family that uh, put the station on the air was forced to sell because they lost control of the programming. And the programming in those days, in the mid-1960s, was pretty rough when you looked at the community standards of the day. Another uh, refers to a general category of radio called Radio Poubelle garbage radio, trash radio, which has been a unique property, particularly in the Quebec City area. And station CHOI was forced to be sold, again, because they could not control some of their announcers who were doing some hideous things on the air. I could quote, but I won't, because you really don't need to hear the sort of things that were going on there. The CRTC had been more than patient but I'll tell you, it was, uh, it was far beyond what anybody could ever accept. Now, the obligations of a broadcaster. There was an article co-written by our former Supreme Court Chief Justice Beverly McLaughlin entitled, Regulate the System, Not the Speech. So when we look at Bill C-11, what it's really going to do is regulate the broadcaster and the broadcaster is responsible for the material that's played on it. I could play any record I wanted, but if I didn't follow Canadian content rules, the broadcaster, i.e. the station I worked for, would get in trouble. But nobody was standing over my shoulder saying, well, you've got to play this next, you've got to play that, you can't play that record, except, you know, if it didn't uh, match the format. So it's not the content producers. It's the platform that provides the content to the public that C-11 will regulate. And by making Canadian content more available to Canadians, we will do something about that cultural, and I use the word uh, advisedly, juggernaut to the south of us, and particularly when it comes to French production. One of the most delightful things in my time as a member of Parliament is the fact that I, I have a home in Quebec. I love it here. Quebec is such a wonderful, unique thing, and we must do everything we can to protect this unique culture in such a unique country such as ours. So, Madam Speaker, I think I'll, I'll end it there. Let, let's go to questions. But I have to say that although some of the fears may be quite legitimate, they actually don't get borne out when you look at the details behind Bill C-11. Thank you. 